Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company taking a look at a pair of men's Lilliput pistols. Uh, these are one of the lesser known brands of little commercial pocket pistol that were manufactured in Germany during the 1920s, in between the two world wars. So the story of the August Men's Company starts, of course, with August Men's. He was born in 1861. Uh, became a professional gunsmith and mechanic, as they'd say at the time, uh, opened his own shop, his own business, in 1905, and started producing his own pistol designs in 1908. His very first one was actually like a four-barreled multi-shot Derringer thing, he called it the Regnum, had apparently an interesting sort of rotary clockwork style of sear to it, but this was in competition with a number of semi-auto pistols that were then coming on the market, it didn't do very well. Fast forward a couple years, he develops a new pistol called the Menta, uh, which is a much more traditional, simple blowback semi-auto pistol in 25 ACP. Uh, develops this in 1913, and it's a better pistol, it has some commercial prospects, but then World War I breaks out. Now there's not much market for uh, commercial pistols, especially 25 autos, during World War I, production turns to military firearms, for obvious reasons. So uh, Menz scales up his Menta to 32 ACP, which was one of the cartridges being used by the German military for sidearms at the time. Uh, the German military is interested in this, they accept it, however, Menz doesn't have the industrial capacity to make a lot of them, so instead that's taken over by the company Becker & Hollander. And they will actually continue to produce that pistol both during the war, where it becomes one of the German, sort of secondary German uh, 32 ACP sidearms, and they'll also produce it after the war under license, presumably paying royalties to Menz. At any rate, uh, August Menz dies in September of 1918, and the company is taken over by his son Alfred Menz. And this is kind of where our story picks up with these two pistols. In 1921, a, guy, a German guy by the name of Franz Karpinski in patents designs basically this pistol. And he initially markets it himself under the name, the name Sika, Sika. Um, doesn't do very well. Goes to work for a company that uh, has a little more industrial capacity. They put it on the market under the name Nordflug, where it still doesn't do very well. And then it appears that about 1923, Karpinski went to work for uh, Alfred Menz, or at least sold his patents to Alfred Menz, because just after that these pistols come out under the name of the Menz Lilliput. So there's a little bit of debate over exactly which came out first. Some of the literature says the 4mm came out first, some of it says the 6mm came out first. By 1924-1925 these were both on the market, and they're both the same gun, just one's a little smaller, like the Baby Menz and the Mama Menz. There was also a uh, 7, uh, 32 ACP version, which I don't have an example of here. But uh, these come on the market in the 1924-1925 well, time period. They will stay on the market through the early 1930s. And um, these are a pair of gorgeous little examples, so let me show you these up close. I apologize, it occurred to me I didn't even tell you what caliber these things were. This is a 4.25 millimeter, uh, 4.25 Lilliput, or 4.25 Erica, which is about the tiniest actual practical pistol you'll ever see. Uh, that is just under 17 caliber. And then this is the big version in 6.35 millimeter, or 25 ACP. Uh, these are basically identical to each other. Uh, both went under the name of Lilliput, with a couple of different model names that we'll get into in just a moment. To put this in proper perspective, we should show you a proper pistol with it, like the Luger. Hold on. There we go. Now you can actually see this in proper context. Uh, these are very, very small. So they're not quite, uh, they're not quite Calibri small. Just for uh, reference sake, there's the 2mm Calibri for comparison. But even the 25 ACP version of the Lilliput is small, even by today's uh, pistol standards. All right, if we take a closer look at these, um, we have the, the model name Lilliput, caliber 635 up there. This is a model 1925, and these will be found, um, the 25 caliber ones, with no model designation down here at all. And then marked Model 25, Model 26, Model 27, and Model I, or Roman numeral 1. Um, it appears that each year they updated 
the designation until after 1927, then they just went to the kind of standard Model 1. Uh, about that time they also introduced a Model 2, which had a bit longer grip and held 8 rounds. This only holds 6 rounds in the magazine. Our serial number on here is 18,000 and change. Uh, these went up to about 45,000 by the end of production, so they actually made really a fair number of these. This was definitely more popular than the 4.25 millimeter, but as I mentioned earlier, there were a lot of other guns out there at this time period in this caliber that were more popular. So this one's kind of on par with guns like the Webley 1907 and the Mauser WTP. Um, they're out there, but certainly not the market leader. Moving over to the 4.25 millimeter, we have a Lilliput again, caliber 4.25. This one is marked Germany, presumably for export. It is a much lower serial number, despite the fact that it's model 1, uh, meaning that this was from the very end of the production series. So I would expect maybe 8,000, maybe 10,000 of these manufactured in total. So 20%, 15 or 20 percent as many as the 25 caliber guns. You'll notice they both have this nice little uh, wreath and caliber marking emblem in the grip panels. It's on both sides. So we have 4.25 there, 6.35 on the bigger gun. These were also sold uh, through other retailers, so you will find sometimes these with different grip medallions and different slide markings uh, for other companies. Sights are kind of an afterthought. There is a trough on top of the gun, sort of, but be realistic, this isn't the sort of thing that you're going to take a precise sight picture with. Now I can disassemble it for you, it's pretty easy here. We have a retainer at the back of the slide, push that in, and then you can pull the slide straight up, and it comes off the front of the frame. Uh, these are very simple blowback pistols. There is a striker up here with its own striker spring. I'm not going to go ahead and take that out. You can clearly see how that works. Um, open topped slide there, firing pin and extractor on the top of the slide. On the frame here we have a recoil spring and a little guide plunger. And then being striker fired when you pull the trigger, this sear simply drops, which allows the striker to go forward. When the slide cycles back after firing it's going to hit this which is going to pop that sear back up. That's your semi-auto disconnect, so it doesn't fire more than one shot at a time. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, fixed barrel, so in theory a reasonably accurate pistol, not that you'd ever really be able to take advantage of it because of the size and the sights. Um, there is a safety here on the back which simply blocks the, uh, the trigger from moving. That's it. You can see under, on the side of the barrel, under where the slide would be, we have uh, August Men's, or A Men's, sorry, of Sul, and a pair of German commercial proof marks on the frame in the barrel. So for reference sake, that 4.25 millimeter cartridge was firing a 12 grain bullet at just over 800 feet per second uh, for about 17 foot pounds of energy. Uh, metric units, that's going to be 1 gram at about 250 meters per second for 23 joules of muzzle energy. This was a really, really wimpy cartridge, although I think it's important to keep it in perspective. Um, at that time, 32 ACP was a military cartridge. 25 ACP was not necessarily unpopular with police forces uh, in Germany. Um, for comparison's sake, the 25 ACP is going to be about three times the bullet weight. It's 45 or 50 uh, grains at 760 to 800 feet per second, giving you something in the range of about 65 foot-pounds. Again, in metric units that's going to be three gram bullets at 230, 240 meters per second for about 89 joules of energy. So like six, the 25 ACP here has six times the muzzle energy of the 4.25. That 4.25 was a very easily concealable pocket pistol. Um, people will also I'm sure point out that at this point uh, you didn't really have the same sort of antibiotics that we have today. And the risk of infection from a gunshot wound made almost any gunshot potentially fatal, although not in the immediate uh, aftermath, you know, not, not within minutes or hours. So yes, these were actually used as 
practical um, self-defense pistols. Um, probably, presumably, more for dissuading an attacker than actually killing anybody. After these have been on the market for a few years, the men's company kind of starts shifting its focus a little bit. In 1928, they buy a, the Schlegel milk factory and start producing and selling rifle barrels. In 1928, there's legislation passed in Germany that requires handgun registration, and that really reduces the market for guns like this. Um, Men starts focusing more on larger caliber pistols, which I mean 32 ACP, designs some later models that will start to look quite a lot like the Walther PP. Um, whether this was directly the reason why Walther sued him in the mid-30s, I'm not sure, but it stands to reason that it would be. Um, that caused some financial difficulties, uh, I think, because in 1938 the men's company was sold outright to the Bergman company, and that was pretty much the end of the men's company. So um, these are interesting pistols in that, I mean, there's nothing particularly mechanically unusual about them, but it's neat to take a look at some of the lesser known brands of self-defense little pocket pistols from Germany from the 1920s. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you'd like to follow uh, Rock Island Auction more, you can take a look at the description text below. You'll find a link there to their YouTube channel and also a link there to their Instagram feed. We can't keep track of everything that they're doing. Thanks for watching.